Meta tables. You've probably heard of them before, and yet you've never taken the initiative to learn what their purpose is and how you can use them. But do not fret, I'll tell you everything you need to know about meta tables. Firstly, we should know what a table is. It is a simple data type that stores other values, and we can structure that data however we want. So for example, here is my table, I'll just call it my table. And inside of here, I can store any values I want, like numbers as an array, or I can store values in here like a dictionary where I create a particular key and I assign a value. For example, this is my key with the value of 10. So we should know exactly what a table is. Of course, we can also store tables within tables and in those tables, we can store other tables. So this data type really gives us the ability to structure data however we want. Now a table can become what we would call a meta table when it is attached to another table using the function called set meta table. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function. And it says, sets the given tables meta table. You pass a table to it, and then you pass another table, which is going to act as the meta table. The purpose of the meta table is to act as a helper table to define what the behavior of another table should be when certain events occur. A good analogy for a meta table would be a restaurant menu. Imagine you're looking at a selection of food in the menu and you wanna make a modification to a menu item. Maybe you want more meat, or maybe you wanna add extra spice. Whatever the case may be, that's a specific event occurring where you want to modify something already predefined in the menu. Now let's say there's a small section in the menu that details exactly what happens when you make a modification to something in the menu. Like if you wanna add extra meat, that's $4 extra. Or you want to add extra spice, that's $1.50 extra. That small section that tells you exactly what will happen when you try to modify the menu is like a meta table in Lua. For example, by default, the Lua interpreter has no idea how to add a number to a table when we use the addition operator. So if I were to refer to my table and try to add a value of 3 to it, and let's say we store that back inside of my table, the Lua interpreter has no idea how to do this, and that's because tables can be structured in many different ways. It's impossible for the Lua interpreter to know how exactly to add the value of 3 to our table. This could be the same scenario when you have a restaurant menu with no special section that defines what should happen when a customer wants to modify a particular food item. For example, how much should the restaurant charge if the customer wants more meat, if they don't have that defined somewhere in their menu? Now, wouldn't it be neat if we were able to define exactly what should happen when we add a number to a table? Well, this is where we're going to use a meta table for that task. Now, the meta table is going to store functions inside of it, and these functions will get executed internally when a specific event occurs, like trying to add a number to our table. The creators of Lua defined a set of identifiers or keys we must use in the meta table and we can associate a function with those keys and this key value pair that gets executed during a certain situation is called a meta method and the term method is just another word for function. These meta methods themselves define exactly what should happen in a given situation and the meta table is simply storing all of those meta methods together. Inside of the Roblox documentation, they give us a nice list of all the predefined meta methods that we can use. For example, there's one called add here, and it says this is used when we use the addition operator on a table, which is exactly what we want to go ahead and do. We can also do it for subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, exponentiation. We can use it when the two string function is called on a table, or we can use it to get the length of the table when we use the length operator or we can go ahead and use it when we index a table with a key that does not exist. There's a whole bunch of different meta methods here for different situations. So specifically here, we wanna focus on the addition meta method. And this function is going to get past the table and then the value we're attempting to add to our table. So let's go ahead and implement this inside of Studio. So I'm going to create another table and I'm going to call this table my meta table. And it's just another empty table and this won't become our meta table until we actually attach it to my table using the set meta table function. So once I call the set meta table function and I pass my table and the meta table I want to attach to it is going to be my meta table. Boom. Now my meta table is a meta table attached to my table. We can also store the return of this function back in my table, but it's not required for us to do it because this function will directly attach my meta table to our table automatically and we don't have to restore it back inside of the my table variable. 
Now we're not done quite yet because we have not defined what the behavior should be. So if we were to run the code just like this, we're going to run into an error. So if you take a look at my console here, I'm going to execute this code from the command line. And if you take a look, attempt to perform arithmetic add on table and number. So the Lua interpreter by default has no idea how to add a number to a table. This is where we have to define it ourselves. So inside of our meta table, let's go ahead and create a new key for our underscore underscore add meta method. And we're going to set it equal to a function. And if you remember, it's going to be past the table and then the value we're attempting to add to the table. So we can call this our table and then we can grab the value that is attempting to be added into our table. So now we can go ahead and define the exact behavior that we would like to happen by trying to add a number to our table. So in this instance, let's go ahead and add this number to every single index value pair in the table. So we can go ahead and loop through every single index and value inside of our table. And let's just go ahead and update inside of our table at this current index to be equal to the value plus the other value that we need to add. And then this function is going to require us to return a value. That way, after this operation here, we can store it back inside of the my table variable. So if we go ahead and return our table, now it's going to be stored inside of the my table variable after we perform this operation here. So after we perform this operation, let's go ahead and print my table into the console. And then let's go ahead and run this code. And what do you notice? Look at that. The number three has been added to every single index value pair in our table. So we have the value of one, we added three to it, and now we got four. We had the value of two, added three, we got five. And then we had the value of three, added another three, and we got six. Now I'm going to show you something a little bit interesting. Let's say I don't want to override my original table, and instead I want to create a new table. We'll call this other table, and I want it to store the result of this operation right here. And then let's go ahead and print other table out into the console. So if we execute this code, again, what we should expect is to have four, five, and six. Now, something very interesting you're going to see is that let's go ahead and print out my table and other table. And if we do that and we take a look at both of them, what's going on here? Both of them had the number three added to all of the index value pairs in their tables. What's going on? Well, the issue here is that when this operation occurs, it's passing my table to our add meta method. And what's the issue? Well, we're directly influencing or manipulating the values inside of our table. So when we return it, the value that's actually being stored in other table is the exact same value that's being stored in my table. They're both referring to the exact same table in the memory of the computer. Now, the problem with this is that if we were to go and modify my table, that modification would also happen to other table. If we modified other table, that modification would also happen to my table. And that's because they're both referring to the same table in memory. This is a big no, no. And this can cause a lot of confusion in your code. What we need to do instead is we need to use this table here as basically a read only table. We don't want to manipulate any of the values in here. We're going to make a promise to not manipulate the values inside of the table passed to the add meta method. In fact, the idea of promising not to change a value, but instead return a new result is very similar to something called const in the C++ programming language, which is used to tell a function not to modify the original value passed to it. This idea is known as const correctness, and I recommend for you to look it up online in your free time. So inside of our add meta method, let's go ahead and create a new table. Let's call it result. And this is the table that we're going to return at the end of our function. And instead of directly manipulating the values inside of our table, we're going to use it instead as a read only table. And instead, what we want to go ahead and do is add these values into our result table at the exact same index. So we're looping through every single index and value pair inside of our table, and we're just reading from it. And what we're going to do is we're going to set inside of our result table that exact same index with that value plus the other value that we need to add to it. Now we're going to be returning a brand new table that's going to be stored somewhere else in memory. So now what you're going to see happen is that my table and other table are going to be two different tables. If we execute this code, let's go ahead and take a look at both of them. Look at this. Our my table still stores the values of one, two, and three while our other table stores the values of four, five, and six, and that's because these are two different tables in different locations in memory. 
This is why it's important for us to not modify the original table that's passed to our add meta method and instead create a new value that we're going to return. This allows us to uphold this idea of const correctness that you may find in other programming languages. Let's go ahead and take a look at a, another meta method. For example, the underscore underscore sub meta method, which is used for subtraction. So what we can do is actually just copy this code right here because it's going to be past a table and the value that we're attempting to subtract from our table. And all we need to do is swap this addition sign with a subtraction sign. So now we are able to perform subtraction on our table. So let's go ahead and run our code and see what we get. If we look inside, we still have one, two, and three in our original table, but with our other table, what do we get? Oh, we get negative two, negative one, and zero. And that's because we subtracted three from every single index value pair in our table. Very cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at a, another meta method. For example, this one's called underscore underscore two string. And this meta method is going to be called when we attempt to use the two string function on our table. So for example, when you print your table out inside of the console, what's actually happening internally is that the two string function is being used on this table to convert it into a string. And Roblox has their own implementation of this, which is allowing us to see the different index value pairs inside of the table. But let's go ahead and define our own meta method and define what exactly we would like to print inside of the console. So this function is simply just going to be past the table itself. So we could just call this our table. And what we need to return from this function is going to be the string that we should print inside of the console. So what do we want to print out? Well, we want to print out every single index value pair inside of our table. So let's go ahead and return a new string. And I'm going to be using string interpolation for this. If you don't know what string interpolation is, you should look it up on Google. It's on the LuaU documentation page but it basically allows me to insert values directly into the string without having to use the concatenation operator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put brackets inside of here and I need to go ahead and use the escape character on these because the bracket inside of this special string is actually used to insert values inside of the string. So for example, the first value that I want to insert is going to be the value that is stored at the first index of our table. So we'll just do one. And then the next value I want to insert is going to be at the second index. So our table two. And then we'll grab the value at the third index. So our table three. And then let me wrap this in curly brackets. So what's going to happen is we're going to print out a bracket on each side. And between those two brackets are going to be our three numbers. So let's go ahead and run the code again. And this time, what did you see print? We got one, two and three. But you should notice that with our other table, it did not print in that particular format. Why is that? If we take a look at our addition or our subtraction meta methods, what's happening here is that we're creating a new table and then returning that table. Now, the issue with this is that this new table doesn't have our meta table attached to it. So after we perform a subtraction or addition operation, we have lost the meta table and we're no longer able to perform those operations on it. So for example, if I wanted to make a third table, we could call this another table and we were to set it equal to other table plus the value of three. Look what's going to happen. We're going to run into an error. Attempt to perform arithmetic on table and number. And that's because the table that is stored in other table, which got returned from our subtraction meta method, does not have our meta table attached to it. So an easy fix for this is to simply return the result from the set meta table function. We'll pass our result and then we need to reattach our meta table to it. So we'll type out my meta table. And if you notice, wait a second, it's not auto filling. Uh oh, it doesn't know what this is. Unknown global my meta table. And that's because we are trying to access the my meta table variable directly inside of the table that is being used to declare the variable. So in order to fix this, it's very simple. We just need to declare my meta table up here. We're not going to initialize it with any value. And then down here, we'll set the value of my meta table equal to this table. And now that means inside of our functions, we're able to access my meta table. You can see it autofill right there. So we can do this both for the addition and the subtraction meta methods. And now the table that is going to be returned from these methods are going to have the my meta table attached to them which means our error should be gone and we should be able to print out 
another table inside of the console. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we hit enter. There we go. We got our results and then we got our two prints inside of the console. And actually, let's go ahead and print out every single one of these tables. So we'll print my table, then we'll print other table, and then we'll print another table. And for another table, instead of adding the value of three, which is just undoing this subtraction operation we did here, let's go ahead and add the value of 10. Now, if we execute our code, as you can see, each one of our tables printed in that format that we defined inside of our two string meta method. There are a ton more meta methods here that we can use to define exactly what we want to happen in specific situations. Another example we're going to take a look at is this one called UNM, and it says fires when the unary operator, the unary minus operator is used on the table. If you don't know what the unary minus operator is, well, it allows us to flip a value from being positive to negative or negative back to positive. For example, if I created a variable here, I'll just call it num and I set it equal to negative three. This is my unary minus operator. I'm flipping the positive value of three and making it negative. We can do the exact same thing with tables. So for example, let's say I wanted to store inside of other table the negative or opposite of my table. We're using the unary minus operator. Well, we need to define exactly what we want to happen when we're using this operator on our table. So let's go ahead and define a meta method for that. Remember, it's the underscore underscore UNM meta method, and we're going to set it equal to a function. And this is simply just going to be past our table. So this is going to be executed when we use the unary minus operator. And what we can do here is let's just copy what we did in our subtraction. But instead of subtracting a value, let's just simply flip the value using the unary minus operator. So now, Anytime we use the unary minus operator on our table, it's going to flip all of the values, which was one, two, and three to be negative. So let's go ahead and delete all of this and then let's just print our table out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it back to be positive. So we're going to set other table equal to itself and we're just going to flip the values back inside of it and then we can print that out again. So let's go ahead and see what we get. If we execute the code, Look at that. All of the values inside of our table got flipped to be negative. So we got negative one, negative two and negative three. And then we flipped them back again, which allowed them to go back to being positive. So we got one, two and three. So yeah, meta tables. They're not as scary as some people make them out to be. They're simply helper tables that define the behavior for a table when certain situations occur. So we know that in order to set or add a meta table to another table, we use the set meta table function. And then the purpose of this meta table is to store key value pairs that have the predefined keys that were defined by the creators of Lua. And these predefined keys and their functions are executed internally when a certain situation occurs. For example, what do we want to happen when we use the addition operator on a table? What do we want to happen when we use the subtraction operation? Or what if two string is called on it? What if we use the unary minus operator and a whole bunch of other stuff? This gives us the complete and total freedom to manipulate tables however we want when we're using these different operators on them. So that's all for me in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.